yet it goes unutilized by modern science. So it's a natural anti-cancer molecule found in rice, which is why it's so popular in Japan. They knew, they've known about it for so long. And it's very effective and safe. And there's the dramatic entrance. IP6. So this is, this is the chemistry part of it that's not very interesting to most of us, except for some. This is the inositol hexaphosphate molecule. Each one of these points is a carbon atom. And these are phosphate groups. That's a phosphate with four oxygens around it. And we've got another picture of it here in a second. So there's six phosphates. And they call that the chair formation, but that's not anything you need to know. It's organic chemistry. And it occurs naturally as a calcium magnesium salt. So this is another way of drawing this. And on each phosphate group, you've got either calcium or magnesium. And that's what makes it a little safer, because a lot of people that we're going to talk about, a lot of people were concerned, because one of the main functions of this is it gets iron out of the system, because iron is one of the things that uh, cancerous tumors use in order to grow. And so it gets the iron out of, out of your system, and people were worried that it was going to cause iron deficiencies and anemia and things like that. But we're going to find out that did not happen. Walter, how are you, sir? Excellent. So most drugs are modeled after molecules found in nature. We kind of knew that already. So we take the natural molecule, then we rearrange it so that you can make, get a patent for it, and then you can turn it into a drug. And then you can make lots of money. But they haven't figured out a way to do that with this yet, but I'm sure they're trying. Tumor cells, as I talked about, utilize iron as a primary growth factor. And the cancer researchers are searching for a drug that would be able to attach or chelate the iron molecules and remove them from the body, thus producing an effective anti-cancer drug. They have three that we're going to talk about that have different, fairly severe side effects. Researchers at Wake Forest said that iron chelators, is how you pronounce that, may be a valuable uh, therapeutic agent in the treatment of cancer. They may act by depleting the iron, which is a necessary nutrient, nutrient for tumor growth. Therefore, it would limit tumor growth if you took out the iron. This was in 2004. So here we have peroxide reacting with the iron that has two positive charge going to the iron plus a a hydroxide atom plus hydroxyl, and it's the hydroxyl that's the free radical that causes all the damage. So the, you have the OH negative and then you just have the hydroxyl itself. If you have IP6 reacting with oxygen and four irons, it goes to four irons and water. So it's a much cleaner reaction and you don't have any free radicals. So it sucks up all the free radicals. I know it's impossible to see this, but that's basically what this one with the happy face is representing. Because it's, it's a happy ex experience, a happy reaction. So the hydroxyl radicals are formed as a consequence of the oxidation. I know it's chemical chemistry stuff and that gets a little snoozy, but it's interesting to know how it works. So it's the oxidation, oxidation of the iron plus two to the iron plus three during the reaction of iron with peroxide. And these free radicals, the hydroxyl, react with DNA, proteins, or lipids, causing cell injury or even cell death. So if we bind these iron free radicals, therefore inactivating the iron, the IP6 prevents the formation of the toxic hydroxyl ion. So it acts as an antioxidant that protects us from the harmful free radicals, but it also enhances our body's ability to kill the invading microbes through increased production of the superoxides inside the neutrophils. Another mechani mechanism of action for the IP6 and inositol is the inhibi inhibition of excessive and uncontro uncontrolled cell growth in disease conditions. It does that without affecting the rate of cell growth in the normal cells. So, in, And in very high doses, it may kill cancer cells, the IP6 m might, but it's not going to kill normal cells. That's a distinct difference with most anti-cancer agents. A lot of chemotherapy drugs, they basically try to kill the cancer before they kill the patient, unfortunately. One of my wife's really good friends is going through this right now. It's, it's scary. So here's one of the oral drugs, Feraprox, or Deferaprone, which is used to do the same thing that the IP6 will do. It chelates the iron, and it's effective and inexpensive but it, it has a lot of toxicities that the IP6 does not have. 
Plus, it's a drug, so you have to pay lots of money for it. Mm -hmm. And some of the supplement, the IP6, we actually given away two bottles tonight, and it was tw one bottle was twenty dollars, and the other one was thirty-eight. Here's some other drugs that are out there. The adriamycin, it's an antibiotic drug that's used for cancer treatment. Also binds, or chelates to the iron. But the drawback to that is that it often results in oh severe damage to the heart. It decreases the uh, heart force, the contractile ability of the heart by 50%. And as our local pharmacist states, it's very expensive. Very expensive. So the primary iron chelator utilized in anti-cancer studies is Desferol, and it can retard tumors, which is good, but it has a modest effect because it actually has a poor ability of getting inside the tumor cells to remove the iron. Thus, even though IP6 was known to be an antioxidant with potential benefits for human health and many industrial usages, a lot of people called it an anti-nutrient because of what we talked about before. They were worried that it was going to cause the minerals and the iron in, in people's systems to go down, which would cause anemia and problems like that. And the agricultural scientists out there have been trying to eliminate it, as I said before, from their cereal grains, staples, and much of the world by genetic engineering. So, I mean, it makes no sense. They're actually trying to get rid of something that's good just because they can make bigger crops, but they're not as nutrient rich but they make more money, so I guess it does make sense. So there was a pioneering experiment done in Maryland back in 1985 that this gentleman proved that far from being an anti-nutrient, not only is it extremely safe, but that it is it and its parent molecule, inositol, have anti-cancer and immune boosting function. It's really boosts the natural killer cells which attack all the foreign invaders that we're going to talk about in a second. So some questions about IP6. As I said before, does it reduce calcium, iron, zinc, and, or other minerals? That's one of the concerns. That's why they labeled it an a anti-nutrient. No, it does not reduce any of those. Now, this was based on a study back in the 1950s where in uh, Egypt and northern Iran, they uh, had some deficiencies, but it, they assumed that because they were eating unleavened bread, which is rich in IP6, that that was what was causing the mineral deficiencies, which doesn't make any sense at all. Back in the 50s, who knows what their other diet, dietary habits were. But we did another study, and this was in the highlands of Guatemala, 412 babies that they were given supplements, mineral supplements, and they were given also IP6 reduced genetically modified maize, so therefore they should have a really boosted mineral levels and they should be nice and strong and grow vibrant. That didn't happen. So the it was uh, pretty obvious there in that case with the 412 people that it's not, it doesn't cause any nutrient deficiencies because the nutrients and minerals, that's not the problem. So why do we combine the inositol with the IP6? We have a table here in a minute that's going to show that the inositol, which is just the six carbon ring without the phosphates attached, in addition to the IP6, which is the ring with the phosphates, why is that better? And we're going we're to see why that is here in a second. You compare it to a one to one molar ratio, that just means that a mole is uh, a certain number of moles. What is, what is a mole? It's Avogadro's number. What's Avogadro's number? Do you remember? I'm testing you. It's, it's way back. You don't remember? It's, you take one mole of one uh, inositol, one mole of the IP6, and that's going to yield a lower inositol phosphate, the IP3, which is a key regulator in cells. That, therefore, increases the efficiency of the IP6. So experiments have been shown to, to uh, result in synergistic, consistent, safe anti-cancer and immune enhancing effects. While both of these are independently shown anti-cancer actions, they, are, they do actually have variable models and species. So if we're looking at the different tumor parameters, which you're going to see in the next slide, you have the number of tumors, you have the size of the tumor, and the uh, incidence of tumor, when that's all taken into account, when you use the IP6 with the inositol, it's definitely safest and most effective. So I know this is hard to read because it's dark. This is just with uh, people that had just the carcinogen, there was no inositol, no IP6. This one here is just with the inositol here, and this one is just with the IP6, and this one is with both. 
And so this refers to the prevalence of the tumors, the pink is. This refers to the volume or the size of the tumor and the chocolate brown color here at the bottom that's really hard to see. That is the frequency of the tumors. So as you can see here on the far right, when you use the inositol with the IP6, it has a much lower frequency of tumors, much smaller tumors, and less prevalence of the tumors, which is what this slide explains. So I can, you can read that if you like, but I just explained it. This is something I think is really interesting, and we have a really great video that I'm crossing my fingers works. So this is the natural killer cells, or the NK cells, that attack all the invading ant um, antigens, et cetera, that might come into your system, cancer cells, viruses, et cetera, bacteria. And uh, this is shown if you're exposed to a carcinogen and you don't have any uh, additional inositol here, it's, uh, you've got 31% uh, tumor growth and incidence of that, 19% activity with the NK cells. When you go all the way over to the inositol with the, the uh, IP6, there's no incidence of cancer and it goes all the way up off the charts to almost 50% increase in activity of the NK or natural killer cells. When you have it exposed to the carcinogen here, you still only have 12.5% tumor growth and 39%, almost 40% activity of the natural killer cells. So just the combination of the inositol and the IP6, which is in the supplement, it's the combination of both, you're really boosting your immune system immensely. And this is what this slide explains. So the combination of IP6 and inositol in tumor-bearing animals is even higher than the tap water control, which was the far right. And the most spectacular is there was a mar marked boosting in normal healthy animals. So people that didn't have cancer, they took the IP6 with the inositol and they felt healthier and had boosted immune systems. They didn't get sick as often. So now this, I'm hoping, is a video that's going to show up here in a second. And it's not working. That's terrible. Terrible. Oh, man. Well, basically, this was a really fancy... Actually, I have a way to show this anyway. Hold on. I'm so determined to show you this that I am going to look it up real quick. Because it's really neat, and it's only a couple minutes... I don't know if we have volume or not. Do we have volume on this? Yeah, control. <laughs> yeah, but it's not playing. Is this muted? No, no, no. <clears throat> I'll explain this in a minute if it's muted. <laughs> Well, that's so fo out of focus, you can't even see it. Well, anyway, right here, this is the virus that's on there. We're not worried about the virus, we're worried about the next stage. So this has infected this cell, so think of this as a cancer cell. This is in the blood vessel, blood zooming by. So it's changed a different color, so now it's an infected cell. These are the natural killer cells. It sees this, as something's wrong with this, so it's going to kill it. It attaches itself to it and then it shoots out peroxide. So another word for this is a peroxisome, so it ruptures and, and puts peroxide on there. That pokes holes in the cell membrane of this cell that's infected and eventually causes it to disintegrate. Sorry, I don't have any volume, but I thought that was kind of neat. What's the name of the video? It's Immune System Natural Killer Cell. And now I will find my presentation and back to this. Sorry for that little brief interruption. 
So the two main so sources of IP6 and inositol are rice, actually the rice bran in particular, and corn. So most of the nutraceutical grade compounds are extracted from the rice bran. That's why there's so much in Japan. So they also are asking the question, does it interact with other medicine or food, which is always a good question when you're talking about cancer or anything that might interact with any medications that you might already be taking. Uh, we know that the chemotherapy drugs are definitely not an, a good thing, but if you're already in that, in that system, you can also take this. The thing I liked about this the most is that uh, it works very synergistically with standard chemothera chemotherapy drugs because of its structure, because it's got the calcium and magnesium salt. So it, it makes it unavailable for any strong interaction or interaction. So it's almost like a uh, catalyst. It doesn't actually get too involved, but it might speed up the health of the individual. And this is the calcium and magnesium form that we saw earlier. And there it is again. Now, this was a professor that showed that IP6 prevented cardiovascular calcification. And one of the other benefits is calcification of the heart and the cardiovascular system can lead to placking, that can lead to thrombosis, which is just a blood clot that builds up in the artery. And the IP6 actually keeps the platelets, which is the beginning stages of a clot formation, keeps them slippery so that they won't clot nearly as, as easily. So yet another benefit of the IP6. I'm still amazed that I've never heard of this before. So as far as uh, prostate cancer, Back in, we talked about this in Forks Over Knives. Back in 1953 in Japan, there were only 18 cases of death from prostate cancer. But in, during that same year in America, granted we were about twice as big, so that we would expect maybe 40, 50 cases maybe. We had 14,000 cases of prostate cancer death in 1953. So it actually interacts with the protease inhibitors, which are some of the drugs that you take when you have prostate cancer, and actually works better enhanced the killing of the androgen-independent prostate cancer cells. That's a mouthful for you. And these are some really great success stories from people that have taken uh, IP6 over in Japan and some in the states here. This first gentleman, 80 years old, he had a liver tumor that he was about to uh, have anti-cancer drugs injected directly into his liver. He started taking IP6 went back in and got, had a CAT scan before the uh, procedure and revealed that the entire tumor had died. And so it was all necrotic tissue in there. So it was just a ball of dead cells. This was a middle-aged woman who, uh, whose husband worked for a prominent member of Congress, so we were aware that uh, the higher-ups know about this. She had stage four breast cancer and had a rapid and complete remission following consumption of IP6. Now we have a 70 year old man, and you're thinking elderly people, they're going to have a, a, a kind of compromised immune system. This gentleman had a, a lung tumor the size of a golf ball that radiologists had mi missed on x ray. He went through chemotherapy, got into the system, went through chemotherapy. The tumor reduced by 75%. In 99, he started taking the IP6, and by 2004, the lung tumor had completely disappeared. So he went through all that chemotherapy for nothing. This was a, I really like this one. He had recurrent bladder tumors. He had to go in and have them surgically removed in 99, 2000, and 2001. Then he started taking IP6 and has been 38 months without having to go in and get any tumors removed. So, I mean, it's, it just, and it all goes back with the chiropractic philosophy as well. If you get your immune system boosted up 300% for every adjustment, you get your immune system boosted that 300%. You take the IP6, that helps your natural killer cells be even more active, more vibrant your immune system, you're going to be able to handle everything. Flu season, well, what? Well, what is that? You'll be like, well, my body can handle anything. I've got super natural killer cells. And the Natural Cancer Institute actually on their website did admit that there's a substance found in many foods that comes from plants, including corn, wheat, rice, and soybeans, and in some cereals and legumes that was studied for the prevention of cancer. But according to the website, they're not doing any human or don't have any planned human clinical studies of this for some reason. I did boggles the mind. And this basically says the same thing. Although the uh, IP6 has been shown to be effective and non-toxic, they uh, 
aren't planning any human trials, even though it's made it on a list of promising anti-cancer agents. This was eight years ago. Phytic acid, that's another name for IP6. This uh, researcher said that it was only, it was four of 22 chelating agents that helps get the iron out of your system. Um, that blocked that hydroxyl radical production. Only the IP6 was found to be economical, non-toxic, and effective. So that just is a nightmare for pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceutical companies want not economical at all. They don't really care about the toxicity, and if it's effective half the time, that's fine. As long as they're making money. So the obvious choice among available iron chelators is the IP6. It meets all the requirements for a safe chelator to treat cancer, penetrates inside the cells, is non-toxic, inexpensive, and very effective. But it's just not a drug. That's the problem. And they try to spin it as, well, since it's not a drug, it's not regulated by the FDA or the DEA or any agency, so you can't say that it treats anything or cures anything, so it's not regulated, so be scared of it. And like, okay, I think if you have cancer, you have enough to be worried about, so let's take something that's cheap and see if it works. Affordable, I should say. Um, it does inhibit the growth of breast cancer cells, but it actually also acts synergistically, as we talked about, with other chemotherapy uh, medications that might be used, or anti-cancer drugs that might be used. This is really interesting. Uh, patients that had invasive ductal breast cancer, so technically this is human studies. They had, there were only 14 people involved in this, however, so it's not really big enough to I guess consider a human study. They were divided into two groups. One took placebo, one took the chemotherapy drugs or the anti-cancer drugs, and one um, took the chemo or the anti-cancer drugs with the inositol and the IP6. And the people that took just the, or this is how they took it, they had six grams and two, day, two doses, six grams a day, starting from the first post-operative day after they had surgery. The ones that took the chemo along with the IP6 and the inositol didn't have any cytopenia, which means their cells didn't get smaller. And they didn't have a drop in leukocyte or platelet counts. And one of the interesting things is that the people that were taking the IP6 and the inositol had a significantly better quality of life and function. They could get through the day, they felt good. And when people are taking these ty types of medications, you know that they don't, they don't feel very good. So any, even if it's just that, that it helps them feel better through these tough times, I think it's definitely worth, worth the small investment. So please share this with anyone that you know that you care about that is having to deal with, with cancer, or even if you're healthy and just wanna make sure your immune system's nice and strong, especially during the flu season now, we can boost our immune system by getting adjusted, obviously, adjusted, obviously but also with the IP6 to get those natural killer cells nice and strong and aggressive. And the October special, only $25. Any questions? I know it's a lot of chemistry and stuff, but...